Hey guys, so this is actually my favorite day of the year. Maybe, okay, I really like Christmas, but so maybe my second favorite day of the year after Christmas is actually seed day. So I like to show off my seed room a little bit. I have so a couple times in the past, but this is the first time that I'm offering or that I'm doing it as a YouTube video. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera around and show you what I have going on. So this is my mudroom and I use it as a storage room for all my appliances as well. Um, I have all of my freezers out here. It's messy, I know, but I don't know why anybody would paint anything white on a farm and we bought it white. So, uh, during the winter, I use this as my cold storage. We are now officially moving into seed starting time, so I've had my oil heater going out here for a few days to bring the temperature up. Uh, I went ahead and sanitized my seed trays, which I did a reel on that last year, but basically I just washed them and dried them and then sprayed them with a 10 to one bleach spray and let them sit out. Seed trays that have been left out for a year can have fungus and mold and mildew and that's just a good way to really keep that out of your stuff for this year. This stuff up here I haven't sanitized yet, but really all I'm starting over the next couple of days is onions, so I have what I need. I also have all of my pots from last year as well, that those will get cleaned before I use them. Then this, these are my seed starting racks, which I'll show you the top in a minute. What I just did is I bought one of those racks from Walmart for my, uh, for a garage or something. I think it was $60. I spent, I think 20 or $30 each on these grow lights from Home Depot. And I can change the height. These were last used last year, so they're, very close up to the top. I can lower them, which I do. And I have one, two, three spots. I have two of those. Once my plants get bigger and don't need to be directly under a really close light, I'll actually move them to this table. And I have a large light that hangs down that that's just not up right now. I have another one over here that stays up all year. And those are really great for once I have like large tomato plants. And then they're on tables that are really easy to just walk out this door onto my patio. There's my new compost bin. I absolutely love it. I've been wanting one for years and I finally have one now. And I have it right off the back porch so that it's easy for me to access. Um, so yeah, when I harden them off, they go out there. And then what I have here is my seed starting table and all the stuff that I use with this. So what I did about two weeks ago, I pulled out last year's seed inventory and then started a fresh one. So if you notice here um, in this line, I put what date I start them inside. And in this line, I put what date I transplant them outside or some of them that'll be blank here. And that means that I just plant them straight outside. And that really helps me because I can just hang my list right here on the wall. And then I know when I'm starting every day when I come out here. And everything that I didn't like, so I also, this is how I keep my seeds organized. I know there's some people that have much better organization than me, but this is what works actually turned around. I have my winter seeds, my summer seeds, then flowers and herbs and grains. So I grew up in California where there actually is uh, spring and winter gardens. I don't have that so much here in Idaho, but I still separate out my winter garden because it's the things that I expect to either be going in in the winter or I can start early like onions. If I buy a big pack of something, I just keep that up here. So let's see, I have more onions, my winter squash. You can see most of my seeds here are from True Leaf Market. Um, I buy almost exclusively from them. I do buy a lot from Baker Creek as well. Um, I didn't this year just because I had overbought last year and still had some, thing, some seeds left. So I ended up just not needing anything from Baker Creek. Um, I did also order a new soil blocker. And then somewhere around here, I couldn't find it. I have my old soil blocker, which is a two by two, but 
but I never really had any luck with it. I would mix my soil in this bin, do just like everybody was saying to do online, and found out that the soil I was using wasn't right for that. So I did switch to black gold all-purpose potting mix after last year with all the issues with another brand of soil was actually a soil I was using and I was losing all of my seeds or my seedlings and I couldn't figure out why. I repotted them into this soil and everything worked really great. So um, I'm going to stick with this soil when I'm starting in containers. I have another soil on the way from Fox Farm that I'm going to be using for my soil blocking, which that's coming from Greenhouse Mega Store along with all of the trays and everything that I order all comes from Greenhouse Mega Store, but that won't all be here for two more days. And I was excited to get started today because I don't think there's anything better than opening the seed box. Even though I only ordered a few things this year, I didn't need a whole bunch. I wanted to open it with you guys because that's my favorite time. Hard to do with one hand. So, yay, all the seeds. Makes me so excited. Oh, and then when I was making my seed list, just so everyone knows how I know what I needed, I crossed out everything that I still had. And what was left, I added to this list to make sure I ordered. That was my seed order, and this was my pots order. That's from Greenhouse Mega Store. I love their prices. They're great. I always shop from them. So let's see what I got. I got more pole beans. I actually bought a size, a bag of pole beans this size last year and lost the bag while planting. And I had some of my bean sprouts die and I had nothing to repot it with. And tree leaf was already sold out. I was super bummed. So this year I'm gonna do it right with the pole beans. I got a Save the Bees mix. I want to plant more uh flowers and things for the pollinators around my garden this year i had some pollination issues this year and i think it's just because there's only grasses near my garden so i wanted to make sure i had something for the pollinators um okay so i had to jump on the lufa uh bandwagon i see everybody doing it i thought it looked like fun i thought my kids would get a kick out of it i i don't know I, maybe i'll really love it so then Tender sweet carrots. I ran out of carrots also last year. I actually had carrots still in the garden from last year because it snowed before I could get out there and pull everything up. So I might be really surprised because I did that two years ago and had some great carrots still out there. I've got some kidney beans. This is kind of a new one for me growing some of the things that I usually buy dry. So just going to see how that works out. I like to make a lot of homemade chilies and so I thought this would be a fun one. Uh, oh, more kidney beans. Yay. Um, here is a pack of a pepper collection. I always just get a bunch of peppers, and I saw this pack this time, and I was like, well, okay, they'll just decide which ones I'm growing this year, and that'll be fine. Early girl tomatoes. We have a short growing season, so I'm always about the short growing season tomatoes because I love tomatoes. I could live off them. Pickling cucumbers, and always a must. Ooh, rainbow blend carrots. I'm always excited when I see what I ordered because I always throw something in like this that the kids will love, and then I'm excited, so. Yeah, I have a bunch in here. I always love like getting myself a present. Let's see. Ooh, purple cornflower echinacea. This was another one that I was getting for the bees, plus a little bit of practicing growing some herbs. These two are stuck together. Texas blue bonnet, more for the bees. Uh, tomato super sweets. Love my little yellow tomatoes. Purple top rutabagas or turnips. I love them in my stews, I call it cowboy stew and cut them up in big chunks and the kids go crazy for it. Big beefs, gotta have the big tomatoes. Cucumbers. 
honeydew. I have not been lucky with growing melons here, but I try every year because I love them. And I think I have a trick that I'm gonna try this year that's gonna work, which is growing them in mounds rather than starting them inside. More big tomatoes. Lemon cucumbers, I think we could live off of those in the summertime, so I got a big bag of those. And I think this is my last one. Oh, more flowers. I don't even know what this is. Powder puff aster mix. So yay. Okay, I hope that all of you noticed that everything I bought, I was telling you what I use it for. And the importance of that is actually that don't grow things you aren't going to grow or you're not going to eat because then you're just wasting space. And we all know that we need as much space as possible. I mean, even me on 40 acres, if I, I mean, I can't use my whole 40 acres for my garden. So I still have to use the space that I have. So I hope that you enjoyed this and maybe come back, watch me use my soil blocker when my soil gets in. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Also, I had to show off my new keep growing t-shirts. My shirts are actually all available on my store in regular plus sizes and for men and women, along with some other really cute ones. I'm all about growing my own food and growing as a person. Thank you.